design. The taxonomic history of North American troodontid dinosaurs has been in flux since they were first named. The original troodon, Formosus, was named in 1856 based on teeth. This is a now frowned upon practice as, with dinosaurs, one cannot fully determine species or genera from teeth alone. Caution flown to the wind a bit led to a slew of more complete skeletal remains being referred to Troodon, resulting in the classic super smart giant eyed handsy raptor taloned theropod we all know and love. Some more specimens were named Stenodicosaurus inequalis in the 1930s. Some more bits were given the name Polyodontosaurus grandis. Phil Curry's work in the late 1980s is largely responsible for most of us growing up on hearing only Troodon. He synonymized Polyodontosaurus, Stenodicosaurus, Pectinodon, and Troodon together as it was thought that their differences were really indicative of differences in stages of growth rather than species. Paleoartist and researcher Gregory S. Paul did what old Paul does and threw in Sauronithoides of Mongolia, but that didn't stick. What also didn't stick was the combination Curry did. Recent research has found that the original material used to define Troodon formosus was not up to scientific muster, making the genus and species itself a dubious one. All diagnostic material in the Troodon genus belonged to distinct genera and species. Stenonicosaurus was resurrected to hold a bunch of Albertan fossils and a bunch more were used to define a new genus and species, the rather large Latinivinatrix McMasterae. There is yet another unnamed giant troodontid from Cretaceous Alaska, known for now only as the Alaskan troodont. This mystery genus makes up two-thirds of the dinosaur specimens recovered from the Prince Creek Formation, which is unusual as troodontids are much rarer members of the fauna in other rock layers of similar times. So, what is the troodont seen in ice worlds? Dr. Nash has noted that he and his team variously went for troodon, stenonicosaurus, and latinivinatrix over the development of the show, but ultimately decided to go for the generic troodont name. Dr. Nash says this thing is human sized. The segment is in a cooler forest in the Ice World episode that also contains segments that take place in Alaska, so it might be safe to assume this thing is based more on the Alaskan troodont than any other troodonts besides maybe Latinivinatrix. The troodont dinosaurs were technically not dromaeosaurs or raptors. Instead, they were their closest relatives. As their closest relatives, they shared a lot of similar traits like a bird-like pointed skull, long skinny neck, huge arms with grasping hands, and giant panaceous wings, long skinny legs ending in mobile feet with killer claws, and a long counterbalancing tail with a veined feather fan at the end. Compared to the most well-known group of dromaeosaurs, the eudromaeosaurs, the troodonts were more lightly built with longer skinnier legs, more gracile feet and claws, and skinnier snouts. There were many exceptions, however, especially as you get to the big ones. The wings and feathers present in prehistoric planets Troodon are lifted from what is known of dromaeosaur and bird feathers, plus troodonts have been preserved with feather impressions. The troodont is decked out in a white underbelly, black mask, and light bluish gray to dark ashen gray top. It also has a funny little poof of display feathers on the back of its head, like the secretary bird. Behavior Prehistoric planets Troodon is used to teach the viewer about a unique behavior seen in some modern birds of prey. Pyromania The segment begins at the start of a forest fire in some northern forest. Attenborough says that most animals flee the flame, but that the fire creates opportunities for some animals. We see the theropod get close to the edge of the fire to look for some food and it grabs a burning ember from the fire in its mouth and carries it a bit before dropping it somewhere else where it starts a new fire. The troodont uses the fire it just started to flush out some multi-tuberculate mammals, catches one, and then gets the hell out of the fire. Abundant fossil charcoal deposits show that forest fires were ubiquitous throughout the Cretaceous in part due to slightly higher atmospheric carbon and higher temperatures, but perhaps also due to more dynamic storms than we see today. Dinosaurs would have therefore been quite capable of staying away from fires and understood what they meant. The stratigraphic pyromania shown by the troodont is based on behavior reported in several birds of prey in northern Australia. 
They have been observed picking up embers and creating new fires to draw prey where they want them. The exact level of intelligence, or even sapience, of the smartest troodontids cannot be known for sure, so one cannot so easily assume they were as intelligent as modern raptors, and could do the same things they could. However, one shouldn't discount the intelligence of these dinosaurs either, because some animals today that are considered stupid continue to shock us with intelligence or novel behaviors. The creators and scientists behind Prehistoric Planet wanted to illustrate how dinosaurs may have surprised us and illustrate this interesting piece of archosaur behavior we see today. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.